serve splendor. I want to hear about your how you met Matt Miola and then how did that relationship develop? So Matt Miola was a left field one. Um, I try not, I've never really tried to like just throw boards at guys and chase, uh, you know, different guys to make boards for. I try to keep, I've always tried to keep my brand a little more organic. Um, I've never had like outside investors. I've never had things like that. And um, because my brand, my, my, my goal with, my shaping has always been longevity. I really want to just keep shaping till the day I die type of thing. I just enjoy it. Um, so I've tried not to chase guys. Well, there was a kid from New Jersey, uh, Logan Kamen. He was a, a customer. He actually was just, he rode for a surf shop that we sold boards to Eastern lines. Um, and one time I was over there just on a sales trip, trying to promote boards started making boards for him and uh, he was we used to sponsor a guy named brendan buckley yep. who's now works for stab um he's a funny character he lives in europe now but uh he was kind of the older older local surfer in that area and so we sponsored him for a while and sold boards ended up getting boards to logan well logan is actually cousins with the mules somehow i i, I however they're related um, and he was pretty, he's a, he, he, he is a, he's a really, really good surfer. And he was at the U S open. I, I believe it was the U S open juniors event. He got in and we had been making boards for multiple different guys and had done, done our boards have done well there a couple of times. Um, so yeah, Logan basically was there. And I think Matt was there like kind of, I don't know, just helping him out. And saw his boards and we're like, oh, these boards, your boards actually look pretty good. Like, you know, good luck in the thing and whatever. And then um, I don't know what what he he reached out to us, sent us a message. And um, yeah, just wanted to order a batch of boards. So he just straight up was just kind of like a customer style, you know. And uh, turns out he, the Stab had just done, was doing their first Stab High event. And Waco had just come out with, you know, that they had their air section. So he got invited to the stab event and he was ordering a couple boards from every brand, basically. You know, he got a couple boards from us, a couple boards from, you know, all the guys, you know, he was, he, he, Matt, he's been getting boards from a bunch of different guys. Right. And uh, so, yeah, we just made them, you know, I think, I think we made them two board two or three boards or something like that and i don't know i had um i had been making boards also for cam richards for quite a while yeah. he ended up he he's a really he's a really good surfer all around 100 percent great guy um but he was pretty he's pretty good at airs also and he got into the event kind of late invitation i believe he ended up winning that that event for I forget what it was. It was like biggest air or something. I think he won like 15 or 20 grand or something. And well, Matt had showed up and was like, yeah, I know cams does pretty good airs. Um, just make me a board for, just make me a board that can do airs and can land airs. That's the biggest part because I can do airs on any freaking board. You know, this guy's one of the best aerials in the world. You know, he's like, I, but he's like a board needs to keep speed, needs to have pop and needs to be able to land. And, if you don't put enough foam up front, the nose can just flex too much. If you do all epoxy, it can bounce. There's a lot of different theories. And everybody, I was like, well, it's the wave pool. We should definitely do epoxy. That's what everyone says works best. And he was like, I kind of hate it. I hate styrofoam. I don't like styrofoam. And I'm like, why not? He's like, yeah, it has a ton of pop. But when you come down, it wants to bounce. It's chattery, you know? And he's like, I like to give. And he's one of the few guys out there that's trying to do airs on like pretty bigger waves. And yeah. he, I don't even explain his story. He's, he's, he's gnarly. <laughs> and he's like, I I've, I've blown my knee out because boards are too strong. I don't want some bulletproof freaking board, you know? So um, he's like, if I'm landing right, I'll, I'll ride out of it. You know, I know what I'm doing. If I'm landing wrong, then I'm probably not going to make it anyways. I don't need the board to freaking 
just not flex and just freaking fuck on my knees or hips. So, um, yeah, we made him some boards and he ended up like before, not in the event. He didn't, he's not, he, he just doesn't do that good in contests. <laughs> but before the event, like in the warm up, he ended up landing like some crazy McTwist flip or something and got nominated for a maneuver of the year. Like first time trying the board kind of thing. Um, I was actually Europe shaping at the time and I don't, I don't know him at all. We're not friends. Right. At this time. And it just, I saw, I saw it get promoted on, I think stab or what it was like, it went viral basically. And I'm like, Holy crap. Like I didn't, you know, we just made him one board. I didn't even know he, I didn't even know he tried the board game, you know? And all of a sudden this clip went viral and it was pretty cool. And then, um, yeah, I ended up flying over, or no, 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 not that one. Maybe it was another one. I don't even remember which one it was, but basically I somehow I ended up linking up with the guys later on. And um, yeah, just kind of told Matt, I was like, hey, um, I'd be stoked to make more boards for you. Uh, and he's like, no, 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 no. I don't want to ride for anybody. Shapers are always trying to lock you down. And next thing you know, you're stuck getting these boards from the guy. I don't want to ride for you at all. No offense. I don't want to ride for anybody. I, and, and I don't really need to. I'm like, fuck, he's kind of got a point. Usually these contest guys get stuck on, if the contest guys, if they start having success, they'll keep getting boards from somebody because, and they'll stay loyal to them, you know, as long as they're winning events and doing well. And then eventually things fizzle out if they stop you know stop winning as much or whatever then it's like okay you should totally try the boards too you know uh, but a free there's not a lot of free surfers out there that you know someone like matt's gonna have long he's gonna have a long lifespan you know longer than you know we he, longer than probably he would have thought and he's like i can get bored from guys you know so i ended up uh i was like screw it i'm i don't even know him but you're in Maui. You live right near Jaws. Like, if anything, I can go over there and go surfing and freaking, you know. I, so I told him, I was like, well, hey, man, what if I just, can I just fly over this weekend? Let's let's talk boards. And kind of just, and he's like, oh, I mean, I don't know. I'm going hunting this weekend. <laughs> um, you know, kind of like, and I was like, if it's cool with you, like, let's just, well, he, well, he's like, I just want to get a couple more boards, but I'll pay for them. You know, I'm not looking for free boards. So he ordered a batch of boards and he paid for them and then he paid for more boards. And I'm like, dude, you've kind of spent some money with me paying for boards. Like, tell you what, I'll bring you a free board. Like, let's go surf. Let's hang out in Maui. And I showed up and um, we ended up, he took me deer hunting. <laughs> Bow hunting. I'm not a, I'm not a, not a hunter at all. Really. I've been hunting a handful of times, but um, so I ended up just tagging along with him, bow hunting, you know, and, and yeah, we ended up kind of hitting it off and um, eventually kind of was like, look, if, if you want, let's, let's, let's work something out. And he was, he was pretty, you know, become pretty good friends and um, yeah, he's a funny guy though. He's that's, so, you, you had him on a podcast before, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's been years though. I feel like 2018, 2019, uh, maybe. Um, but let me ask you, I'm just curious. What is uh, him writing your boards done for your brand and then secondly what has it done for your shaping getting feedback from him so internationally i i uh, internationally i've i've i'm actually uh sell quite a few boards in europe um that's a, probably the last story i should probably tell it's a pretty good one but um europe so now we sell boards in europe we license in europe we have this small licensee in japan I have a guy in Peru we were working with for a long time and we have a couple of different, these guys licensing, right? Um, one of the biggest things I always thought for at least just board builders in general, and this is a little off topic of, to answer your question. Um, all products are global. Globalization is here, whether you want to admit it or not, right? Yeah. Mass produced boards. It's, it's going to happen. You know, uh, boards manufactured in Thailand, China, wherever you want to call it, right? Um, I always got really behind this whole thing of there's a, there's only, but so many really good local manufacturers around the world. And 
those guys are all kind of struggling. None of them are, even the top, top guys, the glass shops aren't making that great of money. You know, like, I don't care what factory you go to. There's a couple handful of guys that are doing really well, but for the most part, they're just trying to, you know, they're living month to month, year to year, whatever it is. They're just trying to stay in business. And I've always thought that, and I can take my brand to, to, to Thailand or whatever and build the boards and ship them all over and make a, a higher, higher royalty. But I'm friends with a lot of these guys in places and you can work with them directly um, and send the files and, you know, you can manufacture with the local guys for the local places. And ultimately I'm not at all saying like support America. Cause if you're in Australia, you shouldn't buy made in America. And if you're in Bali, you shouldn't buy made in Australia, you know, like domestic manufacturing, right? Um, the guys in Japan don't need to be buying, you know, they should buy boards made there. Um, or it, you can do whatever you want to do as a consumer, but as like, you want to keep, you want to keep these guys alive. You know, you want to see the guys on the North shore succeeding. You want to see their factories succeeding 50 years down the road when the North shore real estate is, you know, $20 million a house. You can't afford to have a surfboard factory there, you know, but there are guys doing it. So let's try to keep them alive. So I was always a big fan of domestic manufacturing. That was something that I, you know, and, I get it if you win a world title or the demand is there and maybe I will, maybe it, you know, if I can't manufacture with these guys, maybe I'll, you know, but go that route down the road. I hope not, but if it happens, it, it is what it is. It's more just, and I'm not trying to frown on anybody that does it too much. It's more just, if you have the opportunity to work domestically with these guys or licensing around the world, it's a pretty cool way to do it. Um, so for me, that was also another goal was setting up licensees around the world. And back to the Miola question was, um, signing on Miola didn't really, my majority of my sales didn't really change drastically locally, um, or wherever my local surf shops that I had already been selling to. Um, but internationally, it definitely helped um we got reached out to we have a guy now in west australia vaughn surfboard ryan vaughn is does some cool boards there they right away were like hey we want to try the mule design out let's see riding we can we send him the file over he set up a licensee and then um you know his local hot surfer there started getting him and he ended up just getting i think second in the state champs on it so it's it's more about um Having a unique surfer, someone like him, is a pretty unique style or what he does um, for different guys on an international level. It helps, definitely. Um, yeah. What was, uh, does that answer the question a little bit? It, it does, yeah. And I'm also curious if working with an athlete of that caliber uh, and getting feedback from them informs your shaping or how it informs your shaping. Of course, of course 100%. No doubt about it. Um. The biggest learning curve I had with him was the way we build the boards. Um, and it's not just light. He's, you can make a carbon fiber board super light. Um, we actually work with um, Justin Turns of Dark Arts some, and he's definitely, on, in my opinion, on the cutting edge of you know different carbons and Kevlars and different materials and whatnot. But it was, was specifically with Matt, it wasn't about making it super light because he'd ridden tons of epoxies and tons of carbons and he's, he's ridden everything. Um, it was more as I need the board to have some, a little bit of dampening, a little bit of give on my landings, not to get injured. And then they also need to be light and then they need to have a lot of pop still. And I'm also surfing, by the way, double overhead waves on average. He's like, if it's under head high, I'm probably not even surfing. I'm going hunting or fishing. <laughs> so it's like, okay, you want me to make a five seven that's super light, has dampening, and can you want to surf double overhead waves on this? Like, fuck, dude, this is gonna be like, I don't know if we can afford this. <laughs> um, so the first batch of boards, we glass super light foam, glass from super light, and you know he had some sort of going through some and the feedback on the materials was we actually started using a little heavier foam 
not a lighter foam, a little heavier foam. And then, um, and then we build them out with glass from single layer glass, which is kind of how the Aussies do it. And I was always impressed building boards in Australia was all the, not all, but the majority of the contest guys there, they use a harder density foam. Their, their Australia foam is not the lightest in the world. It has a really good flex though. And it's pretty hard. So you can actually glass it lighter. And a lot of those comp boards end up being single layer with a higher density blank that has flex and twang in it. And they, they ride good and they actually hold up kind of okay. Um, so I actually built a couple for Matt in Australia. There was some Red Bull event we were down there for and um, shaped Matt a couple boards in Australia using their technique. And then I did the same way using our foam here in the U.S., um, which the U.S. foam typically, not U.S. blanks, but U.S. foam as a categorizing it tends to be it shapes really well it's a hair softer where the Aussie foam can be a hair harder, but heavier. The Brazil foam, Texel, for example, it's super lightweight. It's actually, su it's the lightest foam in the world that I've ever felt. It's hard on the outside, but the inside softer. So it ends up being a little, they can buckle. Um, South surf blank, South Africa. That's a pretty cool formula that I've used a handful of times. I don't know if the consistency of it all, but everywhere around the world, it seems like the best blank companies is where the best wine is. I don't Fascinating. Know the latitude, <laughs> the latitude where the wine, where the good, there's good wine. They make good, they make good blanks. That's hilarious. So whatever the case is, you got these different formulas, I mean, different formulas, different climates, temperatures and all that. Um, and I just kind of, even the ones we made in Australia for Matt, he said, he was like, yeah, it rode great, but they were still a little rigid, a little more rigid. I've, I like the ones you made better with this foam here and glass this way. And shockingly, they don't, they pressure ink, but they don't snap as easy as people think. Like he's got some boards that are super freaking light glass jobs. And I mean, he's surfing them in big waves, pretty big waves and, and, you know, a little pressure ding and whatnot, but it's not like he just goes through them as much as people think. Surf Splendor.